Hey there guys, welcome back to Back Pocket Game Reviews. I know it feels like we haven't seen each other in a while. Unfortunately, I've had my hands a bit tied and not in a sexual manner, but I recorded a butt ton of videos, like a literal metric butt ton of videos during my uh, day off that I had this week. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have my microphone set up. I'm gonna try to do a couple more like this to where I can just I can get you the news. I can get you what I want to talk about. And unfortunately, I wanted to have this up a couple days ago, but we're gonna talk about it today because, well, it keeps getting shittier. Quickly, too. It's crazy. So, some of you remember I did some videos about the Atari VCS when the Atari VCS was known as the Atari Box and they just announced it. And I may have said that it was going to be complete and utter ass and I felt Atari was just grabbing for money, and uh, I thought it wasn't gonna turn out well. So for those of you who haven't followed the whole situation, Atari is actually not just, there's not one Atari anymore, there's multiple Ataris owned by different people because, well, Atari isn't really a big name anymore. Nor are all the rights in one place. Atari also tried to kickstart a, uh, a roller coaster tycoon game for the Switch. That bit them in the ass terribly. Probably because all of the newer Roller Coaster Tycoon games have been complete and utter garbage. Uh, Paris Hilton's sex tape was uh, of higher production quality. So, you had these come out, and uh, they, they, they did that little try to go fund me, and it failed because no one wants another Atari game. Uh, well, no one wants another Roller Coaster Tycoon game that Atari had any part in. And then, you also had the Atari Game Band Watch. And the guy who makes the game bands, uh, Atari, backed out of that deal with them. But you can still pre-order your Atari game band on Indiegogo, despite Atari no longer being a part of that deal. But the part that should scare you is that same guy also had his hands involved with the VCS. Um, so we're, we're, we're just, we're going to talk about a lot of things here about Atari that should be some warning signs and some red flags to you. So if, just, just don't invest in this. I know a lot of you probably already have, and I'm so sorry. Uh, they've raised $3 million almost to make this thing. And uh, the thing you should really be wondering to yourself, because they really, they really hype themselves up as the classic maker of some of the most iconic games, and they literally stroke their own ego, okay? They stroke their own ego more than I stroked mine in high school, and I'm not referring to my ego. But, Atari is really, really full of themselves on these Indiegogo campaigns and the way that they make it sound like they make some of these awesome games. But can you name me something in the last decade that you would really appraise Atari on? Like, you would just say, wow, Atari really knocked it out of the park here. So what they're doing is they're essentially trying to capitalize on the nostalgia. You can see stuff like Nintendo making these SNES classics or the NES classic, and they're doing really well. They're also doing really well because it's Nintendo, and the worst time Nintendo has ever burnt their fans was the Wii U. I know, I know, there's some of you out there saying the Wii U is garbage, but how are you enjoying all of those Wii U games on your Nintendo Switch? Because you seem to like them now that they're not on the Wii U. It's crazy how that works. Um, I, I do have a sweet spot for Nintendo. So I understand the drive for nostalgia. I get that. I fully do. Um, but with Atari, that was a little outside of my generation. And I feel a lot of their goodwill has been squandered over the years. Especially with the microtransactions that they like to build into every iteration of Roller Coaster Tycoon. Even the ones you pay full retail for. Yeah. Yeah. If I pay $60 for a game, and then you're expecting me to buy the stuff that I would have been given in prior games, you can go screw yourself. This isn't like a cosmetic thing. This is like, you gotta pay for rides. Thanks, Atari. Everything you touch turns to a dumpster fire. I mean, hell. The gaming industry, when Atari was the main player, almost turned into a dumpster fire. Mostly because you're willing to release a crap product very early with no quality control, if, if we're basing it off of the old Atari. Now, the other issue you kind of have here is 
a lot of the pictures you see of the Atari VCS, there's one where they're playing on a TV and the controller is actually an Xbox controller with one red thumb cap and a piece of electrical tape over the Xbox logo. But you don't want anyone to catch that. You want it to look like you have a working model. I fully understand where you want people to think this has actually been a created product. There is no VCS. There is no actual working one right now. They don't have one. They've been caught numerous times. Oh, well, that was, that was running on our hardware, and then they got called out because it was actually running on Windows, and the VCS has already been stated to be running on Linux. Um, there is no actual prototype. That's why they used Indiegogo and not Kickstarter, because Kickstarter, you have to have a prototype. If you don't, you can't kickstart it. So that's where this gets a little more complicated. They haven't made it. And you might ask yourself, why haven't they made this yet? Why have they not designed this product? Well, they have design work done for it, but they haven't finalized the chipsets or any of that stuff, and it's supposed to be coming out next year. The reason why is because they can't afford to make it until after the Indiegogo campaign. So let, let's, let's be upfront about that. They don't have the money. That is why they're kickstarting it. This isn't the Atari of old where they are financially stable. Atari's declared bankruptcy about as many times as Donald Trump. Unfortunate, but true. Now, I'm not saying that Atari didn't at one point in time have... To, they, they were at one point one of the bigger names in games. Mm, not, not so much anymore. They're kind of like the joke that plays on everything they used to make, hoping you'll just keep rebuying it. Kind of what Sega has become. I'm not saying all of Sega's games are bad, but the Sega of old is not the Sega of new. It's just like if Sega were to randomly go, oh, we're jumping back into the, into the console market, I wouldn't leap at the opportunity there, despite me having at one point been a Sega fanboy. Now, the Atari box, they've shown you some mock-ups, they've done a presser where they showed off the Atari box. None of those were working Atari boxes, by the way. There wasn't a single working one there. Even the controllers didn't work. That's how little money Atari actually has. They cannot make this without the Indiegogo. Now, that's all right. I'm fine with that. I have no issues with crowdsourcing anything but they already have kind of a bad reputation with crowdsourcing. Not, not to mention, to top it all off, there are already anyone who has any kind of negative feedback about this, like, um, I can't remember the journalist who just recently covered it, but they went after him saying he didn't understand, and he, we, we explained everything, it's his fault that he didn't get it. He released the audio recordings, and it was pretty clearly that you guys provided no answers, did not answer any of the questions he had, and it was pretty much a, a dumpster fire, just as I said, like everything else that you make, Atari. Um, then you tried to blame RGT85 and went after him, saying he was just trying to capitalize on it. No one's trying to capitalize on the woes of your crap situation. Now. We are trying to save some people some money and say, you should probably be cautious about what you buy because this thing's not going to probably come to the most fullest of realizations. Um, I'm not saying that I think that the Atari VCS won't be made, because I do think it will be made. I don't think it's going to live up to everything Atari is hoping for it to be. Especially when there hasn't been really any third-party companies announced to support this. Yeah. What's your killer app? We got Pitfall. I mean, like, Pitfall from the 80s. Not a new version of Pitfall. And actually, they might not even have Pitfall because Atari doesn't own the rights to Pitfall. Activision does. So, uh, yeah. We got Pac-Man. We got a frogger. You can navigate a frog across the street. Could be hyper violent frogger. Gets caught by a tire. You just see his guts squirt right out. Poor frogger. I was terrible at frogger. I always felt bad for the frog. But the kind of the point I'm getting at here is: Do you really trust Atari? You've got failed Indiegogos. 
you've got times where they have pretty much just cut and ran and pulled out and tried to act like it didn't exist, like with the game bans. You've now got them bashing on people being critical of it. We're a year away from your launch, actually a little less than a year away from your launch, and no one, no one has a working one. You're actually talking about changing the chip inside of it right now, which means you haven't placed an order for the chip. So, uh, where are you manufacturing this? Oh, yep, that's right. You can't afford to do it until you have the Indiegogo money. So, I get it. I understand. I don't trust it. Please, God, do not trust Atari. Next thing you know, you're going to have Atari snake oil for sale. You can also pre-order yourself some Atari hot dog water. Got to get that hot dog water, guys. Don't forget about the wiener water. But it's just... How much of it is going to play on nostalgia and play on the good graces until people get burned? And if they do fail at this, if they do walk away, that's $3 million almost that they're walking away with. I hope they don't. I really do. But let's face it. Shit happens. Guys, also, I will be having my birthday stream the night of the 29th. So June 29th going into the 30th. We'll be having a big birthday streaming bash here on my channel. It'll be around probably 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's, that's my time. That's why I said 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, but we'll be having it around then. It'll be on the main channel here. And if you guys want to drop in and say hi, you can. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to drop a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. My subscribe button also won't make off with your money without anything in return, by the way. That's crazy how that works. Maybe I should have Indiegogo'd my, start, my uh, subscribe button. But also, if you want to follow me anywhere, all the links are in the description box. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll have plenty more content coming for you, and stick around.